Uh, so let's go to the Alisa Hotel now and join Roland Walker in this conversation with Paulina uh, Mo Cynthia Morrison. No, Cynthia Morrison. No, it's not. It's Paulina. Well, thank you, Mama V, for the update there. And uh, it's not Alisa anymore. It's Swiss. You know that we've changed the name to Swiss. And so uh, I guess we have to give it that designation. But uh, it's where we're speaking to Paulina Patience uh, Bayage. And um, she is the minister designate for the Upper East region, but currently the ambassador uh, of Ghana to Italy. And so she's still in the process of trying to wind up whatever it is that um, she had been designated to do as the ambassador uh, to Italy. Uh, and, and I'm sure she will tell us when she has to do all that. You know, some of these reshuffles, according to the interactions we've had with the number of those who have been um, perhaps appointed new or not, uh, comes uh, sometimes uh, without any prior knowledge. And I'm sure in her case, maybe she's had that experience as well. But good morning to you and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank yeah. you very much. much for having me. Yeah. So, and, 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 I, and I know that um, just getting some interaction from your background, you've been uh, a teacher at the Zanzi Senior High and Technical School. It used to be secondary and technical school at the time. You, you've taught at the Borga Training College. Yeah, Borga Technical. Okay. The Borga Technical, technical Training, Training College. College. You've, you've also, also been, been a director for gender at the ministry. ministry. Uh, for the Western region. In fact, uh, from Upper East region to Central region, region then Western, Western region. region. So, so <laughs> you've, you've been, been around. around. You know <laughs> Ghana. And ultimately, you, <laughs> you were, were given, given the appointment as Ghana's ambassador to Italy. Yes. And yeah. now you have this new one. But let's talk about your experiences in Italy and how all these experiences you've had before Italy also prepares you for your new role. What, what was the experience like, especially in Italy? Thank you very much, uh, sir. As we indicated, I think all my adult life has been to public uh, service. I'm not a private se sector person. I've never done private sector thing. So I've been a teacher, uh, my profession. Then uh, along the line, uh, I switched into civil service, public service, civil service, and now diplomacy. <laughs> And I'm back to public service again. So that is basically it. Um, I worked from Upper East Region as the regional director. Before then, I was teaching in Zamsi Secondary uh, Technical, then moved to Bulga Technical Institute, then became the regional director for then women, Department of Women in the Upper East Region. I was transferred from there to the Central Region to go and head the department there. Then from there I was sent to the Western Region. So it's from Western Region I went to Italy. I'm back here and I'm supposed to go to uh, Borga. I'm not yet back anyway. I'm yeah. coming back. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so tell us the experience in Italy. Uh, because it will be a short stint. Have you been there a year or so? Yeah, just about a year. Okay. Yeah, just about, about a year. year. Um, quite exciting. Quite um, challenging. Italy, we have... Uh, approximately about 80,000 Ghanaians there. So that's a huge uh, uh, population, that, that is prime population. You mean 80,000 so formal form data no, of Ghanaians? Formal data that is 44,100. Oh, okay. so but formal, then yeah. uh, have between 65,000 and 80,000, 80, that's the estimated uh, numbers we have there. And then, um, you know, for, for Ghanaians living abroad, sometimes the hustle is real. And because the hustle is real, it makes it uh, difficult for, 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 for them to access quite a number of things. For, that was the challenge I might uh, uh, Apart from being assigned to Italy, I was also concurrently, I am, I am also concurrently accredited to Slovenia, Serbia, Montenegro, and then we have three UN-based, food-based agencies in Rome, IFAD, FAO, and the WFP. All those come under my, uh, my, my, my domain. Um, I supervise all that. So it was quite challenging, quite exciting, and uh, uh, fulfilling. I traveled across the length and breadth of Italy within my short stay. 
uh, from October up to this time. If I still have a few places to go before I, I wind up and come anyway. So, and then you meet Ghanaians, you meet the chiefs, and they, they live just like here, here in Ghana. You meet with them, you interact with them, you try to solve their problems uh, in as much as you can. Yeah, and then also we have the diplomatic part of it. The diplomacy, you meet other uh, ambassadors. Uh, we have the African group of ambassadors. We meet and then we discuss our own issues. Then you have the broader uh, based ambassadors and then you meet, uh, you, have, you have to learn to be diplomatic. <laughs> and for some of us, you know, we are not the diplomatic type, but you've got to learn to be. And I think that generally, I, I did, if you ask me. Based on your I estimation, I did, I did a very good job. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but we know that now you're coming back home. And it means that uh, that responsibility of uh, being the, the, the oversight minister for the Upper East region. Uh, the, the, the region is big, of course, the landmass. Uh, and then it's got its own diverse cultural and social cultural um, nuances, so to speak. Um, how challenging do you think this is? But how do you also embrace such a challenge? Ah, thank you. As I indicated, I've been in public sector for a long time. And uh, it's just the position of a regional minister is maybe the pinnacle of public sector. So for as long as you know uh, uh, the dealings of public sector, that alone is a plus in your basket. Apart from that, I've stayed in the Upper East for most part of my adult life. I know every nook and cranny of the Upper East region. I know its political nuances. I know its uh, traditional nuances. We have about six, seven major tribes in the Af in, in Upper East. Although a very small region. In fact, base, I think it's the uh, second smallest. Upper West is the smallest in terms of uh, not not land uh, mass, but uh, population. population. Yes. Upper 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 but east is the, the upper west mass. is the smaller. Yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. but even this, it's, it's, it might only be bigger than uh, upper west and Accra, mm. because Accra land mass you don't have, but uh, it's not it's not that big. It's not a region that is quite big. So we have we have that we have 15 uh, assemblies, quite small, but then also upper east is the second poorest region in the country and uh, when you go there you know among the poor we have the poorest of the poor we have a lot of uh, challenges the weather is the biggest challenge we have as a region we have just three months of rain. now even with the change in climate cl the climate change it keeps uh, re reducing yeah the, the times keep reducing there were times perhaps you could predict when it will rain and all that, now it's unpredictable. So these are the challenges. Because we have that short uh, rainy season, it, 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 it exacerbates our poverty levels because you, you are unable to harvest much to keep for the rest of the year. Fortunately, at, on the educational front, I think we are doing well as a region. Uh, there were times we had quite a number of girls staying home. Now with the campaign for girl child to go to school, uh, we are doing quite well there. So these are the things that you already know. And because you already know, uh, you just have to work with the people. And for me, I think that is also another plus that I have in my, my basket, that I, I, I tend to work with people well. I tend to work with people well. If there is a work to be done, the work must be done. If we even have a fight, let's leave it at the door come let us do the work when we finish with the work we can go close the door after us and then continue with our fight but when there's a work to be done we've got to work together so you bring you are bringing on board the team work team play we're going to work together and then we'll see. because they, as you indicated there are serious challenges in the region there are serious challenges and yet this is a, a region that has such a huge opportunity to expand you know and uh, so that's what we are going to look at. I'm not going to look at the challenges we have. I'm going to look at the opportunities we have. Because whenever you look at the challenges you have, you, you, you are drawn back 
in a way, you know. But when you look at the opportunities you have, that's a positive way of looking at it. So we are going to look at the opportunities we have. And then we'll work together to harness that and see how we can build upon what our uh, predecessors have already done and see how we can put uh, the Upper East region on the map at the point that it really deserves. We know that it means uh, as you prepare and do the interaction, it's a region you say you know very well. Yeah. Um, since the Fourth Republic, personally, I've spoken to a number of people who will be perhaps whipped from one appointment or position to the other, and we're told that it's always at the, so to speak, the prerogative of the president. Um, this one, can you ask, uh, how, what, 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 what was the drama like? <laughs> I mean, were you in the kitchen or somewhere? How did, how did you get to know? Did the president call you himself? What, how, how was the information relayed? Uh, were you settling in or now settling in? Or had you settled in your new position as ambassador to Italy? Oh, as well, as well, for the ambassador <laughs> position, I had already settled in. Okay. I've settled in. I've actually started learning the language. Oh. <laughs> how did we in Italy? Good morning, it's bonjour, no? Oh. So when I say bonjour, no, you just say bonjour, no? Bonjour. Come star. That's how I use it. Then you... Say bene. Bene. All right. Mm -hmm. yeah, bene is not going to be in the Upper East region. So. <laughs> no, but in the Upper East region, if it is a, a fra fra, we say lanwane, then you say lansu. Lanso. If it is a, a, a I think, talisi la wala is the... Uh, so you speak many of the languages? Uh, kese, kese is a bully. All right. Uh, Kwetamo is Kassim and all that. Okay. Uh, so, so. so let's come back to um, the drama around <laughs> the, the, the call you had that look, you have to pack bag and baggage. That's at certain point, you have to come back home. Yeah. Giving you a new appointment. Exactly. Well, that's why I'm here. I was, I was, I was, uh, I was summoned by the president. Himself? He called you? <laughs> I was summoned by the presidency. Okay. <laughs> I was summoned by the presidency to come to Ghana because the president needed to talk to me uh, Monday night, you know, just as I was retiring to bed, about 10.30 in Rome, Ghana time, 8.30 there. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you have sermons. The uh, president will need to talk to you, so take the next available flight. Okay. So the next available flight, I was on it. Monday night, Tuesday, by 6 o'clock, I touched down in Ghana, went straight to the presidency. Mr. President, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> but so I have an assignment for you. Mm. I want you to go to the Upper East region and work. And if president tells you I have an assignment for you, I want to go to the Upper East region, who are you to say no? My commitment and loyalty to His Excellency Nana Odedanko Ekufuado to succeed is unquestionable, is unwavering. Wherever I am assigned to, I, I pledge to work my heart out to make sure that he succeeds. Because if the president succeeds, if the government succeeds, Ghana is the eventual winner. So that is what I pledge. So Italy, wherever. Upper East, Bogatanga, even if he has said go and be a DC back in Abrungu, I go. Because the most important thing is that there's work to be done. And if the president says that, I want you to come, and then, we, of course, we, we had a long chat, but it's not everything you can say. Yeah. I want you to come and work. And uh, it means that he has a confidence in you that you can deliver. And that's why he's bringing you here to come and deliver. So for me, that is it. All right. But more so, um, we also know that there's a lot of talk and politics uh, around your appointments, uh, not you particularly, but all of you. And you may have been following the news while you were in Italy, etc. There's always a talk about um, how big a government um, the Ecuador government is. I mean, you now are told the, the from yesterday's shuffling of the cards. We we have even one in excess of the previous 110. So, uh, it, it, as an appointee, do you how do you manage? the politics around it, the appointment and the talk about uh, so-called voter like, government, etc. Are you expecting me to give you an answer to this? Well, that's why that's you're the, the politician. You're supposed to the, give me a diplomatic that's the, answer. <laughs> that's the president's prerogative. That's the president's prerogative. He has, he has uh, an agenda to pursue. 
and he thinks that I can work with this number of people to, to achieve my agenda. I've heard that a lot. The argument we are not putting across is that most of these appointees are members of parliament, which members of parliament already derive their salary. Normally, as a member of parliament, you just might have about some 400 CDs top up. Yeah, the next argument is that uh, the ministries come with, uh, with uh, uh, resource allocation, houses, and all that. But uh, if you will have a large uh, group of people deliver and help you to achieve your mandate, why not? And he knows why he has that number. It is never in my domain to debate on that. I can't. Because I don't know what made him to have that number. Maybe it would be better if we get somebody from there. Too I don't know about that. I don't know about, as I said, it depends on the, 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 the equations that are derived. You can have a large number doing nothing. You can have a small number doing nothing. You can have a small number doing much. You can also have a large number doing much. It's based, based on the calculations, and as I said, at the end of the day, the, 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 the end will always justify the means. So I'm hoping that, uh, and he has promised, and I believe him. I believe, I believe in the president so much to deliver. He has said that by the time he's ending his first term, everything that he's set off to do, he will. And I know he's a man of uh, promise. So let's see. <laughs> I was told this morning I'll come, in, I'll come and speak to you. So I decided to ask you a question before. This question I have to. Um, I spoke to a number of um, people uh, and vendors for a school feeding program, and a number of them hadn't been paid. I mean, it's so peculiar to the Upper East region. Mm. But how do you manage such sentiments when you know that people are cooking for school children, they've not been paid, and, um, and, and all, all those disagreements? Even when I come or now? <laughs> when well, I come as a regional minister, yeah, oh, no. I'm sure that situation... show persists when you come. Right? So, how do you manage such um, such challenging things? I, I, Even though it may not direct, directly be in your purview. Exactly. I just wanted to say that that also is not in my purview. I have no idea what is up. But it, look, it, it it's it's been there. It's it's not it's not the first time we are we are hearing this. I don't know how many months they've not been paid. I will follow that particular that particular news. I don't know how many months they haven't been paid, and, uh, but eventually they are always paid. They are always paid. Uh, yeah, you might have uh, challenges with your, with your suppliers because uh, they'll be following you for their money. But eventually when you get the money, you go and pay them. The interesting thing is that, trust me, these uh, 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 caterers who cook, although they are not paid, they always get uh, the suppliers to give them the, the items to cook for the kids. Because they know that when they get the money, they will come and pay. So, uh, obiadika. <laughs> obiadika. Uh, so, uh, so when as, you, as you said, the only thing is, it's, for me, the most important thing about, about these things and how to solve them is communicating. It's always better to communicate your heart and tell them the truth. You get me? Maybe we, we play a bit of politics with it. Uh, uh, if you are able to get Honorable Oti Kujava before she dashes out to, to Italy to take over her appointment, which I'll be handing over, uh, you may ask her. She might be able to tell you why uh, they've not been able to pay them. It's mm. difficult for me to tell you why. Okay. So now let's talk, talk about Oti Kujava. Um, w w w which office is she going to meet in Italy? Um, w what is there in Italy for her that she's going to meet? She's going to meet a staff that is... Um, well motivated. I can assure you that. She's going to meet a staff that is well motivated. She's going to meet a Ghanaian uh, community that is proud of its uh, background. Um, she's going to meet a beautiful, Rome is a very beautiful place. Rome is a mixture of uh, contemporary and ancient uh, history. They, they, they keep their history so much. In fact, they have all the way back to 700 history. yes 700 years before Christ was born you still we still have the, the history standing so it's, it's 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 a conglomerate of a lot of things and I'm sure that uh, she will enjoy her, her, her stay well we've done well in our first year in the office there and uh, I know I have worked with her for a long time just when she was coming into the ministry for gender children and so I was getting out 
And just as she's coming into the room, I'm getting out also. Um, there's a lot, a lot of work to be done. A lot of business opportunities. I followed up a lot of them. She, so she just, I mean, I did a lot. Uh, have you spoken to her? Are you going to speak to her? Yeah, before she left? Would have, would have. Um, it takes time for these appointments. Her name has been announced, but uh, it might take a couple of months for her to eventually go in. This is the process. They will send a letter to the Italian government uh, suggesting her as a replacement. F first of all, they will have to send a letter informing that I am coming back. And then they will send a letter informing that she's coming in. They will have to wait for the Italian government to say, yes, we accept her as your representative. We call that letter agreement. Whenever that agreement comes, then she'll be sworn in. And sometimes it can take three months, four months. So she'll have time to prepare. I also have, uh, I still have uh, some few weeks to do. It's not like uh, moving from one ministry in Ghana to another ministry. I'm moving from Rome to Ghana. So uh, we'll have a few months uh, to, to work things out before. As we, as we wrap up, um, you will still go back to Italy, I'm sure, maybe within the week or sometime yes. as you're ready. Um, the issue of migrants and, and whether Ghanaians are, are largely on a wholesale basis involved, etc. Uh, what is the story out there f on our part? And then how do you, as an embassy, tend to manage it? Thank you. As, as, as you indicated, um, fortunately, this my, my grand thing, we don't have so many Ghanaians. But we have some Ghanaians. Of course you may have. If you have about once in a while, a Ghanaian might join them to come. But for us as a mission, we haven't had that story of like the way you have a lot of Nigerians, Malians, and Nigerians coming in their, their uh, roles. We don't have that uh, for us as a country. Maybe one or two once in a while, three or four once in a while. For every ship that comes, maybe one, maybe two, get me. And it's, 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 it's a plus for us as a country too. Because when you have people trooping in from one country, it tells a, a negative story about that country. So even when they come in to roam by the Lampedusa, they don't, they don't present themselves as Ghanaians. Because the Italian authority will not take you in if you come and you say you are a Ghanaian. There isn't any reason why you should leave Ghana. So whenever they come, maybe they'll come and present themselves as being Nigerians or Burkina Bays, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but with the Ghanaians who are already there, I gave you the numbers. They are hardworking. I, I, I told you that I've gone around about 10 regions since I went. We have 20 regions in it. I've gone around about 10 already. And for every place that you go, I will always go and meet the Italian authorities. And then they will tell you that Ghanaians are hardworking. They are loyal. They are committed. They work very hard. Apart from that, they take very good care of their children. For me, that's another warming thing that I notice. We have first, second, third generations of Ghanaians in Italy. A lot of the young ones are in schools, universities, and all that. You know, they are, they are doing well with their, their kids. They are breaking their backs. The parents, the Italian parents, the Ghanaian parents, they are breaking their backs for the sake of their children. And that is also warming. We had a challenge with their, with their passports because they couldn't, they couldn't uh, access uh, passport services. Italy is not a round country. It's a long country. Although, you know, so it's like, they call it like shoe, horseshoe. So when, and Rome is in the middle. If you want to access passport and you have to travel to Rome, you've got to travel a long distance before you get to Rome, whether you are in the north or in the south. That was their, their biggest challenge. What we did as an innovation was to send the passport services to them. So we will get up. I will go with my staff. My that was not the first time. That was it, it, they, they, it was there, but they scrapped it. And even though it was there, maybe once in a year, at, at, the, at the will of the consular. But this time, we're doing it almost every other week. Then we'll go there, we'll serve them the passports and all that. And I'm hoping that it will be something that will continue, because trust me, it's one of the biggest things that, 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 that is helping the Ghanaian. Well, they say that you brighten the corner where you find yourself. Exactly. Okay, we wish you all the best. And uh, it's been great speaking to you. Uh, we know that at least with the current interactions you're having, you can go and wrap up your, your activities as the ambassador and then come back home. Exactly. 
All right. Um, thank you very much. Well, we've been speaking to, to Paulina Patience uh, Abayake, uh, the minister designate for the Upper East region. And I'm sure that when she appears before the uh, Parliament uh, Committee on Appointment, we will hear a lot from her. But uh, Mamavi, it's back to you in the studio. All right, Roland Walker, thank you very much. And it's uh, Madame Paulina Abayage who is coming from Italy to the Upper East Region.